Hello, this presentation demonstrates how to obtain various descriptive statistics for variables reflecting different scales of measurement. Although this video presentation focuses mainly on procedures for obtaining SPSS outputs, you can also obtain a PowerPoint at the link underneath the video description for more details, including interpretations of the output. A copy of the SPSS data file is also available for download, so be sure to check both of these links out. So for our example, we have fictional data with five variables reflecting five individuals' responses to a short survey. We have gender ID, which is a nominal variable coded 0 for identified as male, 1 for identified as female. Political ID is a nominal variable coded 1 for Democrat, 2 for Republican, 3 for other. SES is a variable reflecting socioeconomic status. It's an ordinal variable that's coded 1 for low, 2 for medium, and 3 for high. Interest is reflecting interest in music. It's an interval scale variable. And then we have age, which is a ratio scale variable. Now, if you go under the variable view tab uh, in SPSS, what you'll find is that we can designate nominal variables and ordinal variables, but then for interval and ratio level variables, those are designated as scale. So here's our data opened up in SPSS. So again, this is these two variables are our nominal variables, ordinal variable, and then our two scale variables right here. So let's begin by obtaining some output for our nominal scale variables. So to do this, what we're going to do is click on Analyze, go to Descriptive Statistics, and click on Frequencies. Now I'm going to go ahead and reset this and then just move each of these variables over. And so we have Gender ID and Political ID right here. When we click on the Statistics tab, you can see that we have various options that are available to us. And given that our variable our variables are nominal, really the only measure that makes any sense out of these options is the mode uh, for the central tendency. So we're going to click now on continue and then under charts we have a couple of options. We can request bar charts and we can request pie charts. These make the most sense when we're dealing with nominal data. Uh, most of the time I'm just going to be working with uh, bar charts. You'll notice too that with chart values you have the option to have along the y-axis frequencies or percentages. So let's run our analysis. We'll set our chart uh, values as frequencies and we'll click on continue. Next we'll click on OK and so now when we look at our output several things to note. First we have a little table up here of statistics and basically this is reflecting uh, the number of valid cases for our variables and then the number of missing uh, cases for our variables. So you can see for the gender ID variable the number of valid cases or number of valid observations is five and there are no missing observations. For political ID the same goes uh, for that. You'll notice that for the mode we have a one for the gender ID variable and remember that we coded um, individuals identifying as male as zero and those identifying as female as one. So the modal category is actually going to be female because they are coded the one and that's why the one appears right here. Now when we look at political ID you'll notice that we have a one but we also have a superscript with an A right here and it says uh, multiple modes exist and the smallest value is shown. So in the case of gender ID we can truly say that that's a unimodal distribution but in the case of political ID it's actually not unimodal it's only giving you the lowest value that's showing in the data set. So let's look at our political ID variable right here and you, you can see that we have Democrat that was coded 1, Republican was coded 2, and then other was coded 3. You'll see the frequency counts for both the Democrats and Republicans are 2 and so obviously the same percentage is represented um, for both of those two categories. So you can see that because of this, our data is actually multimodal. You could say basically bimodal, where we have the mode being the Democrat category and Republican category, or using the numerical values, it would be a 1, 2. Okay, so now as we scroll down, you can see that we have our bar chart for gender ID, and we have our bar chart for political ID, and both of these have the frequency counts listed along the y-axis. And again, if you wanted percentages, all you'd have to do is make that little change um, 
under the uh, frequency chart uh, options. Let me also note that we have Democrat, Republican, other, and identified male and female uh, listed right here. That's because we included value labels in the original data set. So if we didn't include value labels, then we would actually get the number for male, uh, which would be zero, and one for identify as female. And here we would see a one, a two, and then a three uh, in that particular chart. So now let's move on and look at analyzing our SES variable. So the way that we can do this is pretty much the same as what we were doing before with our gender ID and political ID variables. We can go to Analyze, Descriptive Statistics, Frequencies again. And I'm going to move both of these out of here and move SES over. Under, under Statistics, um, really with respect to an ordinal variable, uh, really the most appropriate measure of central tendency is actually the median instead of the mode. But we can leave the mode in there uh, for additional information. So we'll click on continue and then under charts we have again our bar chart option. We can ask for frequencies or percentages. Uh, in this case I'll just go ahead and ask for percentages uh, just to kind of juxtapose that against the, the uh, charts that we were using previously. Uh, in this case, obviously, there's no pie chart that we would be using ever. So uh, really, our only option with ordinal data is to use the bar chart. So we'll click on Continue and then on OK right here. And so as we scroll down, you can see that we have our statistics table again, the number of valid, the number of missing cases. You can see the median value of one right here. And there's the modal category uh, for SES. And so the modal category is actually the low group. Remember that low was uh, coded 1, medium was coded 2, and high was coded 3. And so you can see right here that the frequency count and basically the associated percentage for the low category um, was the greatest among all of the categories. So that's why the, the mode is basically a 1 right there. If we scroll down, you can see that with our uh, bar chart, you can see the percentage listed along the y-axis right here. And there's our low, medium, and high categories that are being represented. Finally, let's generate some descriptive statistics for our interest in age variables. So there's actually various ways that we can do this in SPSS. Uh, one of the simplest approaches is to go through Analyze Descriptive Statistics and click on Descriptives right here. And what we'll do is we're just going to move our two variables over from the box on the left to the right. Under Options, you have the option for mean, standard deviation, minimum, and maximum values. Those are all defaults. We can ask for variance, range, and skewness and kurtosis statistics if we want as well. So next, we'll click on Continue and on OK. And so now we get a table that contains our descriptive statistics for our interest variable and our age variable. So you can see the ends that are given right here. That's the sample size for each of those. Uh, the range uh, statistic is just basically giving the high minus low values for each of those two variables. There's the minimum and maximum values for each of those two variables that are given. The means for the two variables, standard deviations for the two variables, variances and skewness statistic right here and kurtosis statistic right here. And those latter two statistics are particularly useful for evaluating the normality of your data. Okay, so that's uh, one quick way of getting some descriptive st statistics. It's not one of my favorites. Um, another option is to go through Analyze, Descriptives, and click on Frequencies. So we'll click on that, and I'm just going to reset this and move both of our variables over from the box on the left to the right. Under statistics, the most logical measure of central tendency uh, with variables that are scale variables, basically uh, variables that are interval or ratio scale, and we're essentially, in this case, treating these as uh, essentially continuous. We're going to click on mean for the central tendency, but we could also ask for the median and mode if we want. We'll click on standard deviation and the variance. There's the range as well. Um, if you want the skewness and kurtosis statistics, we can click on that as well. If we want the median, um, or if we're asking for percentiles or quartiles or whatever, we would also want, given that the, our variables we're treating as continuous, we would also want to click on values or group midpoints. So I'm going to click on that and then continue. Under charts, um, unlike the previous demonstrations, in this case, we're going to be using histograms. And so histograms are basically uh, like a bar chart, but with the bars touching. 
and it's kind of reflecting the idea that there's an underlying continuity um, in terms of the values on our variable. If we want to show an over, uh, a normal curve overlay, we can also click on this button right here to obtain that. Um, so let's click on continue and then on OK and look at our output. So you'll notice that we have our statistics box right here, uh, the number of valid cases for each of our variables, the number of missing values, you can see there's zero. I will say that in the PowerPoint, I go a little bit more into um, you know, what, it would, what these things would look like with missing values, particularly with respect to our nominal variables. But the same uh, general rules would apply when it comes to making sense out of things. Um, you can see we get our mean, there's our median mode for these two um, variables right here. You can see that we get our standard deviation right here, our variances, uh, skewness and, curt and kurtosis statistics that are given down here. There's the range for those variables as well. If we scroll down, uh, there's some frequency tables really representing the frequencies associated with each individual value for our variables. And you can see that basically there's a number of all of the values for each of those two variables were unique in the data set. So that's why you got have the frequency counts of one. Um, here's our histogram. You can see that basically our data does not look anywhere near normal. Um, you can see the normal curve overlay and basically our data is just not really matching up with it very well. Same goes for age uh, variable here. And that's not a big surprise given that we only had five observations to work with in our data. So now let's look at a different way of representing our data. And this is actually my preferred way uh, is to go through the explore option. So we'll click on explore. And I'm just going to reset this and we'll move both of our variables over from the box on the left to the right. Where it says plots, I typically ask for histogram and normality plots with tests. So we'll click on continue and then on OK. And so now what you'll see, uh, again, at the top you've got a case processing summary indicating the number and of cases that are uh, valid and the number that are missing. You'll see that we have our variable interest and our variable age that's given right here. You can see that we have the mean um, for our variable, um, our median that's given right here, the variance, standard deviation. You can see there's the minimum and maximum values again, the range, skewness, and kurtosis statistics. So you get all that for uh, both of our variables in this case. You can see that we get a 95% confidence interval for our variables as well. So it's just basically, you know, you have your lower bound and the upper bound that's given right here. If we scroll down a little bit further, you can see that we have normality tests. Um, and basically, uh, in the SIG columns for both of these, you can see that these are basically p-values. So this is for the interest variable and age variable. So you have Kamagrov, Smirnoff, and shapiro wilk tests being carried out for each of the variables. And so basically, uh, conventionally, if your p-value is less than 0 0.05, then that would be an indication that your data are departing significantly from normality. You can see in, for both of these tests, for both of these variables, the p-values are actually greater than 0 0.05. And you might be inclined to think that, oh, that, that means that our data are normal. But you have to keep in mind that these Im tests uh, are impacted by sample size, as all inferential tests are. And so the consequence of that is, is that at very low sample sizes, you can end up with a very underpowered test. Uh, and so in this case, it's indicating non-significance when um, our data visually, as we kind of scroll down again, uh, are clearly not normal. So you have to keep in mind that when you're evaluating um, normality of your data, uh, you want to pay attention to not only test results and the statistical indices that are given in these tables, but also look at your data. And uh, so you can see right here the interest variable. This is our histogram again, just without the normal curve overlay. You can see there's no evidence um, that our data are normal. Uh, as we scroll down, again, with our interest variable, you can see that we have a normal QQ plot. That's a quantile by quantile plot. And basically, it's just a plot of the observed values against those that would be expected normal. The degree to which the data points deviate from this regression line right here would be an indication of the amount of departure from normality. And so that's how you would kind of look at that. So we scroll down a little bit further. We have a box plot for our interest variable as, as well. And as we scroll down, you can see there's the histogram for our age variable. There's a QQ plot for our age variable. And then we also have the box plot for our age variable. 
So that pretty well concludes our walkthrough through how to obtain uh, descript various descriptive statistics in SPSS. Thanks for watching.